What's going on, y'all? R&B Divas, LA episode. I think this episode four, season two. Um, we start off where we left off last week. They're still at this little dinner. They're still discussing the things that happened about the therapy session, about stuff that's going on, about the song. Basically, Leela James is like, you know, she wasn't there. We should be able to just put the past in the past. And none of them other two chicks, they're not there. Of course, you know, Lil Mo got to put her little input in and call um, Don the Cowardly Lion. But the thing of the matter is, for uh, Leela, she's just like, you know, shit happens, move the fuck on. And it ain't had nothing to do with us, so let's move on to make this uh, project work. Shantae, her thing is, she like, you know, because of the stuff that happened last year with the other girls and the things that she's going through, she just want to be, it makes her want to be standoffish a little bit, like take a back seat. And they were talking about, you know, when you get in the studio and you do these collaborations with people and you work with each other, it should be on a friendship type level. And I don't think they meant like, you know, the ones that were saying, oh, we got to be friends, friends. It's more so like we have to have a similar like in each other, meaning that we actually can get along with each other. We're cool with each other because when you're doing something like this, in my honest opinion, it's like I can tell when y'all just throwing this shit together and it's just business for one person or business for both of y'all. You can feel it in the record, okay? And like Chrisette Michelle was like, everybody that I did a, a record with or whatever, I was cool with them at some level. And, you know, for Shantae, she was basically like, this shit is just business. Michelle wasn't having that. And, you know, Michelle felt the way. And I kind of felt the way, too. You know, Shantae, she's just being... I don't know if this is the way they're trying to portray her to be the villain, but she's just being very standoffish, and I don't know. So after that, they meet up at Claudette's house, and they have this little jam session. Everybody's trying to, um, sorry, everybody finally get together. They're finally doing the music. Uh, Chrisette Michelle, she brings in this guy, I think his name is Guitar Slayer. Whoever come to find out is somebody that she dating and she was like it's a real problem because he don't like to mix business with pleasure and I'm like girl you fucking him that's pleasure right there and business at the same time but anyway they cute together they cute but um after that they start you know doing a little rhythm little melody he doing a little percussion on the um, guitar her and Chrisette, him and Chrisette, I should say, they got the drums going and they freestyling. And it's like they literally coming up with all this stuff on the spot. And it was cute for what it was. Everybody was getting along. It was sounding real nice, sounding really, really like a little Latin feel to it. I mean, it is Puerto Rico, so come on. And all of a sudden, Chrisette Michelle was like, I'm sorry, but I got to go because, you know, I got a daughter. She's at school. I got to go pick her up. And I'm so glad. Nobody really got an attitude and understood because all of them there are mothers and parents. So, you know, they got it. And she went to go get her daughter and it was fine. Um, When she leaves, though, Lamo was like, I guess Lamo was like, I guess this is supposed to be the dude since you're the only one here. So you're going to be like the producer or whatever. So that means that you're going to get a cut of this whole thing, too. Lamo is all about her money. From when this shit first started, she was the first one to ask, are we getting paid on this? Okay? You know, that's what she's at. She's about her money, and I don't fucking blame her. And they was like, is everybody cool with it? And Shantae kind of interjected and said, yes, we all cool with it, or something like that, to the fact that Lil Mo was looking like, bitch, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Did we get Miss Chalet vote, vote, uh, vote or whatever? And I think, I don't know if she said this, but it almost seemed as if Shantae was like, Fuck her, you know. Yeah, Michelle said yeah, so, you know, cool. We're going to do this. Lil Mo was like, you know, you want to say something, but you're just going to be quiet for a second before you just blow. Because she was just sitting there like, hmm, okay. So, her and Leela, Shantae and Leela meet up. And Leela trying to get to the bottom of what's going on with um Shantae. She was like, you seeming a little closed off. Like, is something really wrong? Or, you know, what what's going on? And... <coughs> Excuse me. Leela was basically just trying to get to the bottom of what's going on. Trying to be concerned about Shantae. And she was like, it's a little bit of both. You know, she's being a little closed off. And, you know, she's just in her feelings a little bit, whatever. Then she was like, you know, if it's anything to do with this music or whatever, 
I was going to sign off on it once I heard the mix. That's all that it is because I'm not going to sign off on something that I haven't he heard before. But the way Shantae was like, what? In my opinion, from my ears, it was sounding as if Shantae was like, so what, you don't trust me? You know, we supposed to be cool or whatever. And I'm not going to put out something that is not going to be hot. No, it's not that I don't trust you. First of all, we really just met. Okay. And... I don't put my name and signature on anything that I haven't heard the finished product for. Or. So, whether I'm cool with you or not, no, I want to hear it. And she just wasn't getting there. I was like, girl, Shantae, what the fuck are you doing? Then we get this scene with Michelle, Christette, Michelle, um, Leela, I think Claudette, and Lil Mo. Yeah, they're out to, you know, having a little get together. Of course, Shantae wasn't there. And they talking about relationships. They talking about freak freak stuff and all this shit. Orgies. Michelle talked about something. The last person that he she dated or something was like a 65 year old, uh, 64, 65 year old white man. And she was like, she liked them old dudes. She wouldn't date, consider herself dating nobody younger than 50 right about now. Lil Mo was like, mm mm. I'm not here for dating nobody with no teeth. No old nothing. Shit, I don't know if he got worms or not. I said, girl, we know what you like because look at you. Mm-hmm. But um, they was like, so we going to hook you up with somebody. Little Mo was like, how you know I ain't already with somebody? <laughs> you just feel, we, yeah, we know. We know. Talking about something. It's too soon for me to be with somebody, but you know I always keep one in the clutch. And um, they was talking about. Have you ever been with a girl? Lila was like, oh, hell no. I was waiting for Chrisette Michelle to say that she has because, you know, it just, and she was really pressing the issue like, would you try it? Have you really? And all this stuff. And I think she's the one that brought the question up. Lil Mo, of course, she said she'd been with a girl, whatever, because, you know, she, her and her husband used to do threesomes and all that shit. I was not surprised at all. But, uh, you know, next thing you know, they started talking about orgies and, you know, watching folks and all this shit. And then next thing you know, Lila says, Oh, y'all some freaks. And automatically, Chrisette Michelle kind of took offense to that. And she was like, I'm not a freak. And she was like, you know, um, don't be disrespectful. And the confession was basically saying that Leela, by Leela saying that, she was being disrespectful to her, calling her a freak. And maybe I just need to change the way that I interact with these girls. And I'm like, Chrisette, loosen up a little bit. She wasn't saying that in a way to be offensive, Okay. I would have said the same thing. Also, oh, y'all some freaks. I say that all the time. That is never to be uh, offensive of anything. I think she just took that kind of the wrong way. Then um, Leela goes over to Claudette's house. They're trying to work on the music or whatever. And they get a call from Caesar, the guy that wants them to do the song. Kind of find out they loving what they're doing, but they want them to, the company want them to add another song within the same uh, time frame as the first one. So that's going to be the big thing. She was like, because they was like, God damn. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this group together as it is. And now I don't know how they're going to react now that we got to do another song. Claudette is just bad as fuck. Okay, that's all I'm going to say on that one. Bad as fuck. So Lil Mo wants to set Michelle up with a matchmaker, whatever, get her something young and tender, right? So they go to Tammy Pickles, the map maker. matchmaker, I should say. Pickles? Okay. Speaking of which, I got a pickle up in the refrigerator. Yes! Bitch, let me tell you something. First of all, it's been a stressful ass day today. I had a job interview. Oh my God. So, I don't know if it's a good sign because after we got through, first of all, they was working on CP time. I'm, I'm, I just got to put that out there. No offense, I'm grateful for the interview. The interview was supposed to start at 1 o'clock. Baby, I was there at 12.45. Set my ass there for over 45 minutes waiting for them to start. Okay, and then when we did the interview, we had a nice little conversation like we were good girlfriends. Girl, look, look, if I don't get this, girl, you better stop playing. But anyway, I just had to say that. And, and, and I did put a little post up on Instagram. So, you know, for everybody that was sending good lucks and, you know, well wishes and saying, I'm going to pray for you. I hope you get that position and all that stuff. Thank y'all. I appreciate it because, you know, I, sometimes I don't respond back to everything because I can't. But I see it and I be so appreciative of it all the time. So don't think it goes unnoticed. But back to this shit. Miss Pickles, little more trying to tell Pickles that she won't, um, first of all. <laughs> 
<laughs> Girl, I can't even do it. I can't. I, I can't do it. If y'all saw Roxanne's Foyer's Rocks review from last week, oh my god, bitch! I had to record that shit and put it on Instagram because when I said she had fucking Michelle, fuck me, okay, fuck, fuck my impression of it. Roxanne had Michelle shit down fucking packed that intro, and I literally just fucking died. But um, anyway. <laughs> it was just so funny. They go to the matchmaker and Lil Mo trying to get her to get with somebody younger. Michelle like, I want somebody older. And you know, she was talking about the last time she was with somebody or whatever and that she kissed the old dude and all that shit. And the matchmaker was like, you know, we gotta get you something someone strong because, you know, they were saying who her baby daddies were, Shug and Dr. Dre. And it was like, but I see you with somebody older. Then it was like, okay, cool. And she was like, you know, race and all that, it don't matter. Fine. So, um, Justin, who is, I think his name, Guitar Slayer, a.k.a. Justin, a.k.a. Chrisette Michelle's little boyfriend, they're having a little get uh, dinner, and basically she's like, um, with all the issues that's been going on between the girls, she don't want any backlash against him. And at first, it was almost as if she wanted to pull him out the project. But she was like, just let you know, if something goes down, I always got your back. And he was like, don't worry about it, because you know I got yours and all this shit. I was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Claudette calls everybody over. Excuse me. Michelle said she couldn't do it because, you know, she had to work. Working on what? That's none of my business. But um, she was like... <laughs> Basically, they want us to do a new another song. Everybody is like, what? Lil Mo said, you know, the hood side of me is like, fuck that song, you know. But um, it's just throwing a whole bunch of stuff into an already conflicted group of people. And how this shit going to turn out, that's what everybody's thinking. And, you know, what's the money looking like? And it's the time frame and all this shit. I would have said something too, like, wait a minute, what? Caesar, you asking a little bit too much right about now. I really don't even want to fuck with these girls, but you know, it is what it is. So basically what the girls come up with, it was like if Caesar wants this second song, he got to take a look at what we need. We need four eight-hour days in the studio, uh, recording studio. We need two eight-hour days, I guess, in the dance studio and some tea because Lil Mo wants some goddamn tea. But other than that... The, the the little discussion, it went well. No one got much of an attitude. But then Lil Mo was like, look, so I'm finna have this sex toy party. And I want all y'all to come. Miss Shalay was like, oh no, girl. We don't do that over here. And I was like, Miss Shalay. Girl, come on now. Loosen the fuck up and just go ahead and we all ahead. Go, just go. And, you know, she was like, maybe. Maybe. Lil Mo's like, I've been married for 12 years of my life. Fuck it. I'm trying to be liberated, trying to do me. Hey, let me explore some shit. Okay. Michelle goes on her date with old boy. He's a 55-year-old white guy. He was like, they go miniature golfing. I mean, <laughs> he looked like her sugar daddy, if you ask me. But if that's what she wants and that's what she liked and she seemed to have a good time and he seemed like a nice gentleman for her, you know, he was like, I Googled you. And she was like, oh, shit. But she thought she was thinking about the negative things that he probably would have saw about her, you know, on what happened in her life or whatever. But he was talking, he instantly started talking about, you know, her, the charity organizations that she was involved with and all this stuff, all the good. And I was like, okay, you got some plus points on that one. That was nice. And he was just talking her up and was like, I want to see your eyes. And she was like, ah, no, because I don't even have my makeup on. And he was like, you know, I don't care. Just let me see your eyes. I don't care about all that. And when he said that, I said, oh, you is putting it on strong. Okay, Michelle, go on the second date with him. You know, she flashed her little eyes. And Michelle do got some pretty eyes, though, if you ask me. Whether they hers or not, they're pretty. And, um, you know, it was all good. Her and Lil Mo, she goes over to Lil Mo house and they're talking about the date. <laughs> and they're talking about the sex party. And, you know, they're making all these sexual innuendos. I'm like, y'all need to go get fucked or something because <laughs> all this sex talk is like, oh my gosh. You know, it's like hearing my, my aunt. Oh, I remember one time I was out with my auntie. <laughs> now, mind you. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so funny because she is so prim and so proper. And oh my God, you know, she acts as if she grew up in sub the suburbs all her life when really she grew up in the projects with my mother. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And her sisters. You know, that's, I'm just saying, that's, she literally act like she, okay, we all know some people like that. And um, somehow the conversation of, bitch, do you give head comes up. You know, my mama ain't gonna say no shit like that because I don't talk like that around my mom. But we was just all joking. And then the bitch that I did not even think was gonna say something and gonna oblige and say basically, yeah. I was like, oh my God, auntie. I, don't, I didn't wanna hear that even though I brought it up. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. And that's how I felt when I was listening to this shit. But it was funny. I accidentally stopped recording. Oops. But anyway. Lil Mo brings up this issue about her relationship with Shantae to Miss Shalay also while they was talking. And basically was like, she's been feeling a type of way about Shantae because, you know, she's been giving her this standoffish type of stuff. And, you know, she was like, when we was up in the studio, she's shushing people. I'm trying to talk. She's shushing. She's doing this. And then she was like, you know, I'm not, the vibe that I'm getting from her is fucked up. And she don't want to say it as if she has a, you know, trying to come at her and so that she can be on the defense and all that stuff. And Michelle was like, if you bring it up to her, it, it, she is going to do that. And she was like, you know, I go into the studio trying to do this lady's anthem and you only call Leela, um, Chrisette and myself. And I'm like, where is Claudette and where is um, Michelle? Michelle, 100%, right out the blue, just said, I mean, right off the top, said, she only picked the people that she thinks will sell, and that's worth something. Y'all, not me and Claudette. And I said, damn, I didn't even think of it like that. And that kind of threw, uh, made Lil Mo say the same thing, like, man, that's fucked up. It was like, because I don't want to come off at her, and then it'd be a communication. Maybe it's just a communication issue. And then Mitch Lay was like, mm-mm, you can't get through with her. I already tried that. I said, oh, what is really going on? So basically... Lil Mo want to, you know, talk to her about this before she explode on it. And I was like, yeah, because something got to give. That don't sound right. Mm -mm. I'm smiling because, <laughs> wait, it's just so funny because I was getting, at this scene, they were at, you know, Lil Mo's house, the sex toy educator. That's her title. You know, she was there. Everybody was there except for Chrisette. And, you know... Everybody was letting loose. They was open to stuff. They was giving their opinion like, bitch, I am not doing that. The lady had one of them, you know, little mo, you know, the little sex toy. I guess, okay, I know a lot of stuff. The flashlight, I think that's what it's called. You know, the hand sex toy with a dude can do it and feel like the vagina inside. You know, they make sex toys that look like women's ass and, um, you know, the hole for the women's ass and the hole for the women's, girl, for the, for the vagina and all that shit. Come on now. Y'all got to get into it. I be looking at stuff, I be reading stuff, you know, yes, I'm very open to a lot of stuff, and I just don't want to be closed-minded, so I know a lot of stuff and how they did that, you know, and you want to know where I learned a lot of this stuff from? No, no shit, no shit, I'm not even going to lie. I look at my Vista, X2, you know, straight and gay porn, but you know, straight porn just does not do it for me, but, um, and sometimes lesbian porn don't do it for me either, but, you know, it is what it is, and then also, real sex. Look, back in the day, real sex was the shit. And this is all that I was getting. There was one specific episode on real sex when they had this, um, you know, like a sex toy party. And they had the instructor in there showing them how to give head, how to put the condom on with your mouth. What is that lady? What's the lady? Angel, whatever the fuck her name, Auntie Angel, whatever. The one that showed y'all how to do the grapefruit and who with the dick all vacuum and style and shit. That's what it was giving me the whole time. Real sex and her. A hood version. It was like her hood ass with real sex white people put together. That was R&B divas at this little sex toy party. When that girl put them things that them handcuffs or whatever, the barbells or whatever the fuck it was on <laughs> Miss Chalet ass. <laughs> Miss Chalet was like, wait a minute. She's between my legs and this is supposed to be for me? Uh -uh, I'm taking this shit home. I was like, okay, Miss Chalet, go ahead. But um, that was a real cute funny thing and I liked it. Don't act like y'all don't be sitting at home. And look, on sometimes, when Leela James was talking about the sex toy and, um, you know, who was doing it? 
Lil Mo was putting her fingers in there. She was like, okay, there's the cervix and all this stuff. And then the sex toy educator was like, this is what he'll feel if he... And I'm sitting here like, because Lila was like, uh, I'm not doing that. I'm like, so wait a minute. You can't sit here and tell me you ain't never put your fingers down in your own shit. I'm just saying. I'm just... We're going to move on. We're going to move on. Because I just had an issue with that. Like, girl, you don't know how the inside of your own body feel? You can't tell me you got to dig up in there all the goddamn time. Psst. Not a real one. But okay, you know, to each his own, I'm just saying. Then they get to the studio. Um, I think Leela and Sh- uh, Christette and Lil Mo, they get to the studio with Shantae. And <clears throat> mind you, when Michelle and Lil Mo was talking about the issue with Shantae, Michelle was like, be cautious of the way that you bring it up because Shantae's going to try to play victim. So they listen to the song. Shantae is like, I don't want to see what they're saying. I'm going to just close my eyes. I don't want to see what they're looking like while they're listening to this song. But everybody was vabbing to it and giving their opinions about it. And then when it came to Lil Mo, excuse me, she was basically like, you know, I do got something to say. Because, you know, it's like it's been shady or whatever between us. And I don't know what it is. And then Shantae was like, oh, yes, there's been shade. And I was like, damn, go ahead and put it out there. I'm going to tell somebody that. I just want, oh yes, oh yes, bitch, there's been shade, okay, I just want to tell somebody that, I really do, I got somebody in mind too, but um, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so basically what Lamo was like, she did say, she was like, you know, we come into doing stuff and it's almost as if I don't even want to do it or whatever, I feel like I just, uh, I don't want to be in this space, and then Shantae was like, you right, and I'm glad. Because there was shade. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. It's out there now. I was like, Shantae, damn. But, you know, she was like, she just had a whole bunch of stuff going on. And she's feeling a type of way about Lil Mo. Lil Mo's feeling some type of way about her. All this shit that went on last season is not even about. And what it all boils down to, Lil Mo's like, all the bullshit that went on last season, you know, she got tours going on. I tweeted about it. And, you know, I put out two singles and ain't nobody tweet or retweet or anything. And then Shantae was like, bitch, I don't know social media like that. And all you have to do is tell me and I would have put it out there. I would have tweeted it. And, you know, before she said all this, she gave her little speech, Shantae. And Lil Mo was like, it sounds rehearsed. And Shantae was like, so you really think I rehearsed this stuff? I don't think Shantae did that. You know what I'm saying? And when it comes down to it for Shantae, she was pissed off at the fact that Lil Mo, her and Lil Mo are friends. And she took a picture with her ex. Mind you, we know all the drama and the stuff that's going on between Shantae and Kenny. And then, you know, Lil Mo took a picture with her, with him. And I think he, she said he's a good guy, some shit like that. If you're my friend and you know all the shit that we've been going through, I can understand how Shantae can get pissed off because I would have felt the type of way. You know, you see me struggling because of this motherfucker. You see what this motherfucker did to me. And maybe outside of our relationship, he probably is. But of course, I'm going to feel a type of way because, you know, he could probably be so good to everybody else. But he was fucked up to me and you know about it. And yet you're going to take this picture and you're going to say he's a good guy. I get where Shantae is coming from because let Lil Mo, let Shantae would have said something or took a picture or did some shit like that with um, Philip. You mean to tell me, Lil Mo, you ain't going to feel the type of way? Or you ain't going to feel the type of way? You know, tell me how y'all feel about that. If one of your friends took a picture with your ex and they knew all the drama and stuff that was going on, you know, and they said that they're this decent person and that's this and that's that. And it was like the Lil Mo Shantae situation. How would you feel? How would you handle it? But at the end of the day, she was like, I don't want you to feel bad. I don't want us to go through this. And they cried and hugged it out. Next week, though, baby, Miss Chalet having a little nervous breakdown. She was performing at the MLK something thing and walked off in the middle of her set. And they were like, bitch, she back there babbling. You don't know what she was saying. I was just like, oh, my God. You know, y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode. And I will see you guys later.